bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of the end of jobs, money, meaning, and freedom without the nine to five by Taylor Pearson. The rapid development of technology and globalization has changed the leverage points in accumulating wealth, money, meaning, and freedom. Those who don't adapt are becoming trapped in the downward spiral of a dying middle class, working harder and earning less. Entrepreneurs that understand the new paradigm have created unprecedented wealth in their lives and the lives of those they love. In this book, you'll learn why the century-long growth in wages came to a halt in 2000, why MBAs and JDs can't get jobs and what that means for the future of work and your job, why the theory of constraints and a shift in the fourth economy has made the entrepreneurship the highest leverage career path for the young and ambitious. Why the turkey problem means accounting may be the riskiest profession in the 21st century, while entrepreneurship may be the safest. How entrepreneurs with the second-rate degrees are leveraging the radical democracy of the long tail to get rich. How the stair-step method and return of apprenticeships have transformed the entrepreneurial leap to make entrepreneurship more accessible than ever. And last, the scientific research on how giving up balanced living and embracing integrated living leads to more money, more meaning, and more freedom. Quick summary. Regular jobs are going decreasingly in value every day. Why? Globalization, technology, and the increase in supply of college graduates. Number two, the economy is shifting from knowledge work to entrepreneurship. Being able to operate in complex, chaotic domains is the new scarce resource. Number three, a steady job hides silent risks, which accumulate until they grow large enough to be catastrophic. It's safer to be exposed to small risks often. It's safer to be an entrepreneur. Number four, technology is revealing the long tail of markets and making entrepreneurship more accessible than ever. And number five, entrepreneurship is more profitable than a job can ever be. Jobs are time constrained and have limited upside. Section 1. Have we reached the end of jobs? Entrepreneurship, connecting, creating and inventing systems, be they businesses, people, ideas or processes. Job, the act of following the operating system someone else created. End of jobs, sharp rises in communication technology and improved global education standards over the past decade means that companies can hire anyone, anywhere. The notion of machines, both hardware and software, taking over blue-collar factory jobs is now largely accepted, but now they're increasingly taking over white-collar, knowledge-based jobs as well. Traditional university degrees, bachelors, masters and PhDs have become abundant, making them less valuable than ever. Globalization. It's much easier to globalize a technology, spreading it to another area, than it is to innovate and create one. From scratch. If your job is unfairly and unjustly moved overseas, it's still gone. It's more effective to accept this reality and work to improve it than to bemoan it from the sidelines. The best way to improve conditions is for individuals with a strong moral compass to acquire power and build better systems. The acceleration of technology. Humans evolved to live in a linear, biological world a world dramatically different from the one we live in now. Both the growth in technology and globalization are continuing at an accelerating rate. The commoditization of credentialism. Even for individuals with an advanced degree who are able to get a job, the value of a degree is dropping. It's now less valuable than ever to understand how to follow directions and implement best practices. It's the work of understanding and operating in the complex and chaotic systems entrepreneurship that's increasingly in demand. Section 2. Why are we at the end of jobs? Theory of constraints. Gold rates theory explains that any system with a goal has one limit and worrying about anything other than that limit is a waste of resources. Previous economic periods. Agriculture 1300 to 1700. Industrial 1700 to 1900. And knowledge 1900 to to 2000. The limits that shifted the economic periods, land, capital, knowledge workers. We aren't going through a global recession, we're transitioning between two distinct economic periods. The limit is shifting from knowledge to entrepreneurship. 
the entrepreneurial complex and chaotic domains are the ones increasingly in demand. The dominant institution is shifting from corporation to the individual or self. What used to require large companies, technologies and globalization has now been made available to the individual or micro multinational. The dominant player is shifting from CEO to entrepreneur. New economic period, the entrepreneurial economy, 2000-ish to question mark. We're at a transition point from knowledge to entrepreneurial work. The individual who would gain the most from the transition are those that invest early and heavily in entrepreneurship. How do you invest in entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a skill set which can be acquired. Right now, there's no way to measure entrepreneurship. Instead, we invest in them with life decisions. Choosing to get an apprenticeship working in an entrepreneurial company instead of going to work for a major corporation is a major career investment decision. Choosing to take ownership of a complex project instead of saying, that's not my job, is an investment decision. Many entrepreneurs that used to have good jobs end up financially more successful than previous peers. They aren't pushing any harder, they're using a longer lever. Section 3. Entrepreneurship is safer than ever. We frequently avoid making choices not because the outcome is bad, but simply because it's unknown. Loss aversion. When directly compared to each other, losses loom larger than gains. Thriving in extremistan. You were raised in mediocristan. Biological systems, fair systems like grades, all follow a nice Gaussian curve. This Gaussian bell curve distribution makes sense intuitively to us. It's fair, a dangerous concept. Looking at the graph, you'll see 99.7% of the data are within three standard deviations of means, 95% within two standard deviations, and 68% within one standard deviation. Normal biological systems, man-made systems, modern systems like the economy, our businesses and our careers don't live in a mediocristan. They live in extremistan. Extremistan is marked by the Pareto distribution. The height of everyone in a bar follows a bell curve. If Bill Gates walks into a bar, the curve doesn't change much, but if you look at the net worth of everyone in the bar, Bill's presence skews the graph. Bill is on the left, his net worth is off the charts. I'm somewhere on the right. As technology continues to evolve, we are increasingly living our lives in extremistan. How to be a turkey. A turkey is fed for a thousand days by a butcher. Every day confirms to its staff of the analysis that the butcher loves turkeys with increased statistical confidence. The butcher will keep feeding the turkey until a few days before Thanksgiving. The turkey will have a revision of belief right when its confidence in the statement that the butcher loves turkeys is maxil and it is very quiet and soothingly predictable in the life of the turkey. Steady income creates a mediocristan, the illusion of steady value creation. This is dangerous, fatally dangerous. It's allowing us to accumulate silent risk. The longer the market goes without having a correction, the larger the correction will be when it happens. The longer we go in our careers and businesses without variation and randomness, the larger the amount of underlying risk we accumulate. Moderate amounts of volatility are healthy. Large amounts of volatility, like having a car dropped on you, will kill you. If you put yourself in a position which creates very little value in the market for 10 years and it gets replaced by machines or Marissa from the Philippines when you're 40 years old at peak earning potential with a family and mortgage, you are a turkey on Thanksgiving. For Rand, a hypothetical entrepreneur, not making money is feedback. There's no silent risk accumulating. If Rand puts up a website and no one buys his product, that's feedback. He can adjust and has adjusted. Money wasn't hitting the bank account, so he's changed the product. He's changed the marketing. Sales are starting to improve. But now he's learning where to forage, how to forage, and the days he goes hungry are the days he's learning the most. Entrepreneurial risk is more visible than the silent risk accumulated by people in most jobs. Rand also develops another skill set in the complex domain, dealing with risk. The rules and the leverage points have changed in ways that were never made clear to us growing up. Many people are entering Thanksgiving week. What was once safe 
is now risky. What once was risky is now safe. Section 4. The Long Tail or What's Making Entrepreneurship More Accessible CD Baby revolutionised the music industry by escaping the limitations of short head and revealing the long tail. Let's look at the power curve again. Previous record companies could only sign artists who would sell enough copies to cover distribution costs to record stores. The green section on the left, the short head, CD Babel enabled smaller artists to sell CDs directly to fans, opening up the yellow section on the right. The democratization of the tools of production. The tools of production are getting cheaper. Rent to own, the sharing economy. Software as a service, plug and play tools and systems. Marketplaces and contractors, plug and play team members and project partners. Self-education, information wants to be free. It's cheaper to make widgets. The long tail has let businesses emerge. They are hyper-specific and couldn't have existed in the retail world. The democratization of distribution. The gatekeepers are dying. Music labels, publishers, etc. We've gone from three channels on TV to three billion on the internet. You are a media company. What traditionally cost hundreds of thousands in advertising is now available to you. New markets are created every day. Movie theatres, record stores and retail businesses can't serve latent demand. The latent demand has always existed, but the economies of retail didn't allow it. Internet makes geography irrelevant. Equals millions of new market verticals. There are all opportunities where jobs are going to be replaced by software and you don't want to be the one with the job. You want to be the one who owns the software. The democratization of the tools of production means it's easy to make something. The creation of new markets means there are more and more people to sell those things to, and the democratization of distribution means they're getting easier and easier to reach. Just as jobs are more competitive and threatened than ever, entrepreneurship has become more accessible. How to become more entrepreneurial. The entrepreneurial skill set falls in a complex square of Kanafin framework, an emergent practice. One, you need other skills which still don't have to be well to find methods of learning them other than the hard way, actually doing them. You also need a different type of relationship, relationship with other entrepreneurs. You need an entrepreneurial network and an entrepreneurial track record. Many full-blown entrepreneurs today started freelancing on the side when transitioned to consulting or freelancing full-time, and some have chosen to release their own products. The stair-step method. The first step in the stair-step method is launching a product that sells for one-time fee and as a single marketing channel. Step two is launching enough of these one-time products that you're able to buy your time back. Step three, instead of working nights and weekends like you've been, you've got 40 to 60 hours a week we put into your business, giving you a platform to launch bigger products and projects from. Start with a relatively ambitious but discreet opportunity and use that to build out your skill set and relationships for the next project. The latent demand and lower barriers to entry have allowed more people to become entrepreneurs by easing their way into the process. That's not to say it's easy, but still have to climb the stairs, but no longer in a single bound. The return of apprenticeships. Apprenticing today works on the same premise as stair-stepping. It's a way to build skill sets and relationships. Find someone that is doing what you would like to be doing in 5-10 to 10 years and cut them a deal. I'll come work for you for relatively cheap and I'll create results you would normally have to pay a lot more for. In exchange, I get to train at altitude. I get to see the inside of how your business works, how you launch products, what the industry looks like and who I need to know. Advantages of apprenticeships to the apprentice. Relationships. You don't need a business idea, you need relationships. Become more effective in complex environments. Play with house money. Apprenticeships are also an outstanding good value right now. Advantages of apprenticeships to entrepreneurial companies. Less risk for employers. You attract higher quality applicants. You build an alumni network of smart, ambitious people. Section 5. Entrepreneurship is more profitable than ever. I don't think of work as work or play as play. It's all just living. Richard Branson. Shifting to agriculture wasn't a decision that Neolithic cultures consciously made because they were happier or more fulfilled. It was one that led to economic prosperity and power. 
The societies that encourage that behaviour won out by force. The traditional job-based simple and complicated work of do X, get Y model has ceased being effective. As humans, we love to work but dislike the obligation of it. The job-based paradigm. Complex entrepreneurial work is both more valuable and more in line with traditional human drives. Suppressing fundamental human motivators was a 3,000-year-old anomaly that's now coming to a close. Three core motivators, money, freedom, and meaning. After a certain point, $75,000 annual salary, money becomes drastically less motivating. We can structure meaning and freedom into our work now. Work goes from being an obligation to a choice. By harnessing freedom and meaning earlier in our careers and putting it into our work, we can now live freer, more meaningful lives that help others and get rich doing it. The economics of entrepreneurship. Any society where money as a proxy for wealth is a limited resource would do well to prevent people from loaning it to one another. If wealth is limited, which was for most of the human history until around 1800, then a loan can only result in one party losing and the other winning. Our understanding of money and wealth creation as a society is rooted in pre-industrial notions. Profit, then, is simply the difference between the consumption and production of a living thing. If a farmer and food manufacturer don't produce a profit, there's no food to distribute as food stamps. The attempt to distribute first and profit second was attempted by Stalin and led to the starvation of 7 million people in Ukraine. Jobs, the slow lane versus entrepreneurship, the fast lane. The slow lane jobs are path that most people raised in our society see. The fast lane, entrepreneurship, the path most people don't see and the one that's becoming easier, safer and more profitable. Jobs suck because they're rooted in limited leverage and limited control. Sure, you can have a great job and a fun one too, but in the scope of wealth, they limit both leverage and control. Two things desperately needed if you want wealth. Jobs are fundamentally linked to time can make more money and more wealth, can't make more time. You give up control. If external market forces doom the company, they doom you as well. Jobs don't do a very good job of protecting downside. Jobs were safe in a world where more and more were being created and wages were increasing, which they were for most of the 20th century. Since around 1980, that hasn't been the case. The alternative to jobs, entrepreneurship, is based on the fast lane math at its core is a focus on rapidly building assets that grow without perpetually requiring direct intervention. Only 10% of Pentra millionaires' net worth of $5 million report that their wealth came from passive investments. While a high-paying job in finance may get you money and a beach bum lifestyle may get you time, it was only entrepreneurs that had both money and time. Fast lane is wealth equals net profit plus asset value net profit equals units sold times unit profit asset value equals net profit times industry multiplier. Tongue twister. In a job, your upside is always limited. Most self-funded startups, entrepreneurships and businesses I work with and talk with are disproportionate by 20% annual growth in the businesses. While most people with jobs I know are grateful to get a 3% annual cost of living raise. Because they have unlimited control and unlimited variables, exponential growth is possible. Assets are more valuable than cash. Unlike a job where your income is simply cash, net profit is actually the number used to value your business as an asset. $50,000 raise versus $50,000 extra profit. In a business you own, you generate an extra $50,000 in profit. You add not only $50,000 to your pocket, but also $100,000 in asset value to your net worth because of the multiply. Unlike a raise, adding $50,000 in profit to your company's bottom line increases the value of the asset, which you own. It's cheaper, easier, and safer to start a business. When you grow it using variables you control, you make more money because you have unlimited leverage. You are also building an asset which can be sold, and you've acquired a skill set that protects your downside. Compound interest is valuable once you have a lot of money. Many non-entrepreneurs see entrepreneurial success as luck. They think people that have a prosperous business just got lucky and were overnight successes. They don't see the years and decades of work 
skill acquisition, and relationships that the entrepreneurs built up. Expected value. It's normal for poker players to lose a hand worth thousands of dollars, but be happy with how they played it. They understood what the probabilities were and bet accordingly. The typical way someone approaches this might be, if I get a job, I can make $50,000 a year. If I start a store, I could potentially make more, but it's also risky. They never specifically quantify the outcome leading to poor decisions. While no individual opportunity is guaranteed to pan out, systematically pursuing opportunities with a positive expected value means you're going to find success over time. Dan Norris failed at 83% of his businesses that launched in 2014, but the success of WP Curve more than made up for those failures. More freedom. The level of freedom enjoyed by the average middle class individual in the West today is beyond the wildest imagination of anyone alive in the 19th century, much less the 18th century. But the most powerful are those who design both their own realities and realities of others. The entrepreneur defines reality, he is not defined by it. He is engaged in a dialogue with his reality asking why and why not, instead of how or what. If we think of the great contributions made to human society, they are all made by people that were free to do whatever they wanted, but use that freedom to create. Great work, the kind of work that will create wealth in our lives and the lives of others, is not the product of obligation, is the product of freedom. Freedom gives us a longer lever, a better leverage point. More meaning. Happiness is a condition which can be prepared for and cultivated. We cultivate happiness through seeking what Mihai Csikszentmihalyi calls flow. Flow at its essence is the ultimate natural expression of human desire to grow and stretch. When we treat work as jobs, as an obligation, a disutility, something that has to be balanced, the inherent tendency to grow breaks down. If someone is worried about making ends meet or paying rent, they won't have a lot of creativity to spread around. We are naturally predispositioned to be growing, goal-seeking, striving creatures. By following that impulse, we can create more valuable work. A natural drive towards an intellectual challenge resulted in more innovation. For heuristic, complex tasks, paying more money decreases performance. In other experiments where researchers looked at artists, they found that the work was actually worse when they were doing it as a job as opposed to something they chose to do. The biggest problem we're dealing with today is the underutilization of individuals. The most talented, ambitious young people, when they feel underutilized in their jobs, shrink to fit their position. Complex entrepreneurial work is what is in short supply, and jobs where we are working as an obligation hurt our ability to do that. We're goal-seeking, striving creatures. We seek goals which create meaning and freedom in our lives. The lack of meaning is a modern problem. It's solved by pursuing a goal greater than ourselves. In doing so, we actually produce more valuable work, are happier, and as a side effect, make more money. For most of our generation, there isn't a clearly defined opportunity or generational promise. You look at someone five years ahead of you professionally, like looking down the hallway at an office. Is that someone whose life you want? Are you excited about that future? Conclusion, the future of work. The means of production available exclusively to the wealthy for all of human history are now in your hands. While we are all sense on some level the expanding amount of possibility and opportunity available to us, you must step up to seize it. We've reached the end of jobs. The implicit promise of jobs made to our parents of long-term, stable employment is dying. We tend to overestimate our ability to get things done in the short term, but underestimate our ability to get things done in the long term. What if you spend an hour every day working on that project you've been thinking about, writing a book, launching a product on the side, to begin stair-stepping, looking for an apprenticeship with a company you admire, building a business that you could tell your grandchildren about. We underestimate what we can accomplish in three years. How much are we underestimating ourselves over the next 30 years? Next steps, barbell strategy. The first rule of career planning, do not plan your career. You can't plan your career because you have no idea what is going to happen in the future. Instead of planning your career, focus on developing skills and pursuing 
opportunities. And that's wrapping the book summary of the end of jobs. Now, before you go away, if you want to be a contributor to Best Book Bits and do audio book summaries, email me at info at bestbookbits.com to get involved or DM me on Instagram at bestbookbits. If you want a copy of this PDF summary, pop your email in the link below and I'll send this straight to you along with another 600 book summaries. Support Best Book Bits by following us on Spotify and checking out our YouTube channel, subscribing, ringing the notification bell, like, share, and comment on what you think. I've also put together a book called Success in 50 Steps, The Proven Formula That Works. I've taken over 500 personal development books and popped them into one fantastic book, researched for over 13 years. So grab your copy now, Success in 50 Steps. Hit the link below. Now, if you want to achieve your dreams quicker than you can by yourself, also do coaching and mentoring. So click the link to apply now. And I've also put together my top 150 best book bit summaries over two and a half thousand pages over five volumes. So grab your copy now in the link below. And if you want to have your best year ever, I've done a course called 28 Steps to Making Your Best Year Ever. So click the link below to check it out now. Follow us on our website, bestbookbits.com, the home of the world's largest free book summary website in written, video, and audio format. Follow me on Instagram at bestbookbits. And we also run a free book club on Facebook, Best Book Bits, check it out now. If you want to be updated with the latest book summaries via email and never miss an upload, pop your email in the link below and get updated weekly on the latest book summaries uploaded. You can also support us on Patreon if you feel like it at Best Book Bits. Check out our top 50 videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got some from this. The End of Jobs by Taylor Pearson. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye now.